Greetings. And as it turns out, season's greetings. As I'm putting this bit together on the 23rd of December and what's looking to be more of a wet Christmas than a white Christmas. Anyway, this is a little video I was planning to do a few months back, but I got sidetracked with work and stuff. The subject this time is Transformers. And no, I don't mean robots in disguise. What we've got here is a small mains transformer with dual 115 volt primary windings and dual 12 volt secondary windings. As you can see, there are lots of ways in which this can be connected to a 230 volt supply, providing us with two independent 12 volt supplies, two opposing 12 volt supplies, a single 12 volt supply, or a single 24 volt supply. It can also be run from 115 volts, used to provide an isolated 115 volts, as a 115 to 230 volt auto transformer, or vice versa, or even as a buck or boost transformer to provide 242, 219, 208, or 254 volts, all from a 230 volt supply. But what if you want higher voltage than that? You can always rewind the transformer, but that could be quite fiddly. I'm going to try a different method, which may also come in handy to obtain higher voltages from other transformers. Alternatively, it may only succeed in showing that when it comes to electronics, I never really got the hang of inductors. To explain what I'm going to try, let's go back to this diagram. As you can see, the two primary windings are in series, so you have 115 volts between the two ends and the centre, and 230 volts between the two ends themselves. Normally for this transformer that would be the input, but instead I'm going to drive it in reverse with 12 volts going into the secondary windings to provide those voltages on the primaries. And the trick here, and where I'll either succeed or fail dismally, is what comes next. Remember that 0115230 volt auto transformer diagram? Well here it is again, getting fed with 115 volts from the first transformer to generate an additional 115 volts at the second. The 12 volt windings don't get used, all the work is carried out by the 215 volt windings. This is repeated again, and again, and again, until the top voltage at this end is 575 volts relative to the centre tap of the transformer and feeding with 12 volts. Down the other way, the same process is repeated, this time with an additional step taking the output to 690 volts relative to the centre tap on the feeder transformer, or 1265 volts relative to the far end, 10 transformers away. 10 transformers away? Yep, 10 transformers away. These are only 3VA transformers, so they were cheap enough anyway. Now I mentioned that I'm not using most of the low voltage windings on these transformers, so I'm going to centre tap these to the transformer cases so the highest voltage present on those windings relative to the case in this instance is 12 volts. I'm also going to connect the centre tap of the high voltage windings to the case. Not that I need to, but in some transformer applications you might find that that connection is already there and you've got no choice. So I'm just attempting to prove that such a connection shouldn't be a problem as long as the transformers are insulated from each other. So this one can't be in contact, in physical contact, with the neighbouring transformer. Now we have the first of these transformers connected up. It's running on this 12 volt AC power supply. Now I don't have any resistive ballast so I want to try and sort of limit the current through here. And I don't have any resistive ballast so I've got this 25 watt pygmy bulb connected which isn't really the best um, solution because as you can see the output voltage of this transformer it's getting about 10 volts going in and it's just under 146 volts coming out. So it's not running as well as you'd expect. I'll just test it briefly. On an unballasted supply. doesn't seem too keen. Let's 
try that again. I'm getting 180 volts there, but I don't want to run it for too long on that, I'd rather I'd rather run it ballasted. But you get the idea. It's getting the voltage in and it's it's stepping it back up. Here we have them all assembled, exactly as that circuit diagram. Here's the one feeding in, and then the centre of this goes to the bottom end of that transformer and the top end of this goes to the centre and that is repeated, staggered all the way that way and in the opposite direction coming down this way so the bottom end of this goes to the centre and the middle goes to the top and then bottom to centre, middle to top and so on right the way down the other way so at the very bottom we have this connection here at the very top we have this one here now bear in mind the output from this is about 140 volts we're not going to get the 1265 but if we get anything at all bigger than 240 if you like I think we're onto a winner so let's take a look power it up 612 volts from a 12 volt input and that has been stepped up as you'll see if I take this probe out in fact the, the transformers are live as well because they're all centre tapped to the case you can see I've got 110 volts there relative to this 167 225, get my hand out of the way of the screen, 340, you can see these cases are all live. So what I've done is I've actually spaced them off the ground using these cheapy mugs. And obviously depending on the transformers you're using, you may want to use something a little bit bigger than that. Or maybe even something like that. Depends on the transformers really and depends what your final voltage is. But as I said, you can see even though these transformers are centre tapped to their own case, there's no worry about the voltages per transformer getting too high because they can't wander too high in each of these transformers. Due to the Sense up connections. So, okay, I've got 600 and odd volts. It's not really what I wanted though, because I've got 240 volts coming in, already, albeit stepped down and ballasted. What if I didn't use the 12 volt winding? What if I actually used, what if I put mains straight into one of these transformers and stepped up from there. Well, we can certainly have a go at that. One thing I forgot to mention with these transformers is that the secondary voltages don't matter. These could be a mix of 3 volt secondaries, 6, 9s, 12s, 15s, 18s, 24s, it doesn't matter because they're not getting used. The only windings we're actually using on these, with the exception of this one at the moment, are the primary windings because we're just using them as auto transformers but anyway let's have a go and see what happens if I put mains straight in to one of these transformers so that's that done we now have live and neutral across the whole 230 volts on this transformer here which should generate 115 volts on his center connection so we've got our 115 volts per side which can carry on up and down the chain does it work? Well, something is drawing power 
let's see what we get. We're measuring from there, let's see if we'll get it on this case. 156 volts to that case. Two hundred and thirty six. We can go down to here. Five hundred and eighty eight. In fact, we'll go right the way down. It might go off the scale for the transform for the no, we've got eight hundred volts there, and the very top connection there. Eight hundred and seventy five as eight hundred and six. So it's tailing off as we're going right the way down. We can see on the one side there, we've got 413 volts that way, and it's going higher than that on this side as well to give us a grand total of 875 volts. I can get it to make a proper connection. 876 in fact. So all we're doing is providing 240 volts in and each of these transformers with the exception of the middle one is adding about 115 volts to each on each stage. Obviously there are losses involved so it is it is it's gaining and you may find the voltage be even higher if I run it without the ballast because bearing in mind we do have that ballast which means that the main transformer is only running on 192 volts. So if this is unballasted or at least using a normal ballast rather than rather than a bulb, I'm sure we can get the voltage even higher. Should we try it? Yeah, go on then. Let's try it. Well, that's unballasted, so we'll be careful now. 670 volts, 906 volts, which means that that last connection down there, I've got to be very careful not to touch that transformer. Actually, hear it arcing onto the car, onto the. It actually goes off the scale for the for the, the meter. You can see we've got 900 volts going to this, 905 volts, plus the voltage that that is putting on as well. So that's getting over a thousand volts from the mains just using 12 volt transformers. Something worth bearing in mind with these transformers is the, these are 3 VA rated transformers but we're only using the primary windings. Now obviously if you're running in 230 volt mode you'd use the two windings in series. If you're running on 115 volt supply you'd use them in parallel to increase the, uh, the the current. If you ran just on a single winding you're effectively halving the power capacity of of the transformer because of the, because of the winding. It may be a little more, maybe a little less, like I said inductors are not my strong point. But basically if you're allowing the same amount of current to go through only one winding instead of two you've halved the power and that's exactly what we're doing here because we're only using the one side that is basically acting that is feeding that winding so it's only rated at one and a half VA for this transformer because this one is running this we're not running them as a team one is feeding the other now this may of course be of use if you have higher voltage transformers if you've got um, something weird like I mean you won't get a, a microwave oven transformer that's center tapped I don't think but if you had something like that 
and you had two of them, you could put one offset against the other to get another 50% more voltage. If you had three, you could double the voltage and so on. You can just cascade them up. At least if what we've seen here is anything to go by, that's what you should be able to do. Anyway, I hope you find that useful or entertaining or something. Um, obviously, safety first. I should have been using rubber gloves for this. Uh, as it was, I was just I was poking around and keeping my distance. But um, if you don't know what you're doing, don't try it at home. Thank you very much for watching.